Hi folks, welcome on in. It's Seven Rivers Racing here on KQEG TV. I'm Losi, Dan Dyker, and we are winding things down just for the time being at some of our local tracks, Lacrosse Speedway. One more big point night coming up, Dells Raceway Port, the park. They have two more nights coming up. Mississippi Thunder Speedway up in Fountain City. They wrapped up 99% of the point championships last weekend. They've got a big show coming up here in September, and the USRA B Mods will be crowning their champ on that night as well. And as we wind things down here, especially at the Lacrosse Fairground Speedway, uh, looking at the points, Al, it looks as though three different classes won't be named this coming weekend. I think it's gonna come down to Oktoberfest. It is gonna come down to Oktoberfest, and when Chuck made the decision to have the late models end their championship at Oktoberfest, I think that that added a nice element of, of intensity to the points battle. Do have to make mention that Al's wearing my shirt today. <laughs> Al did not show up to the studio with a shirt, so I'm wearing my Wisdom shirt. Of course, the station is sistered with WKTY, and you can watch my race report on Saturdays from 4 until 5. D does it fit? Because um, I'm, I wear the larger size than you do. I would say thanks for throwing me under the bus, but this thing would fit a bus. <laughs> it does. It fits me quite comfortably. That was, that's what happens when you are when you pump the chest out. That's and true. I can do that, and Al can't do that. Looking at the points of the lacrosse fairground, Speedway. It's going to be very interesting here. The Window World Hornets do not race again until October 5th, so their points championship will be determined then. Tim Murphy, Jay Raines, and Matt Moore are all tied for the points lead. And then if you look at the rest of the top five, Flame and Fast Mark Bornitz is three points back. Jake Chalmers, who got the feature win last weekend, is only six back. So that's going to be one championship at October Fest. Next weekend, uh, coming up here in just a couple of days, matter of fact, uh, we've got a couple of big races at Lacrosse. And if you look at the Lacrosse late models, we're going to talk about their points race here in a minute, but Todd Korish uh, is hungry and he is chopping at the back end of Jay Herbst. Last weekend, Todd Korish, well, he ended up not too bad again. He got in the top three finish, but the night belonged to Brent Kirchner. Kirchner picking up his fourth feature win on the season, and if uh, Brent wouldn't have had a couple of uh, lapses earlier this year, Brent would definitely be breathing down the neck of Jay Herbst. I think it would probably a little bit more closer than Korish is because Kirchner's got four wins. He may even be out there close to the lead there if he had uh, a few other points nights that would have gone his way. Well, as you watch how this one winded down here, this was like this uh, through the second caution. Bradley Powell was just coming out of nowhere, putting the pressure on Kirchner. Every time he got a little bit closer, Kirchner would step on it, and um, Todd Korsch was trying to stay in this line. And again, for many laps, you saw this race look just like that towards the end. Brad Powell's been very impressive when he comes out. But Todd Korish starts next weekend 25 points behind. And with two big points nights left, you've got this coming weekend and Oktoberfest. That one's not done. No, not at all, especially, and I've mentioned this the last uh, three or four weeks, because of the quality of the late model division now, you've got 20 to 22 cars who are getting tougher and tougher to pass. The back end of those late models are getting a lot faster, and it's harder to pick up points. So if Jay gets into a little bit of trouble, these, these points can tighten up easily. Matt Henderson and Sean Pat rounded up the top five last weekend and Jay Herbs finished six. Brad Powell qualified fastest. He race wins went to Nick Clements and Tony Bankstead. Todd Korsch also picked up a six for six dash win. In the sportsman division, Jamie Dummer on uh, Dummer Family Night at the races. They had a whole bunch of them up there with his night sponsor. Uh, ended up taking home the feature and for quite a while he was a battle of the cousins. It was Jamie versus Jason until a restart. Saw so Danny Gilster start taking advantage, and uh, as you're watching the video here, Gilster trying to hold off the rest of the field for second. And of course, the always fast Matt Inglet, a part of that mix. Jason Demmer fourth, Randy Humfeld uh, uh, fifth in this race here. This was interesting to watch as you had this group of cars pretty much through the entire race battling to try to get it at least into second place. And what's nice is in this sportsman division, everybody is so close and tightly packed. It makes for just such good racing. Well, we've had seven races called out of turn four this year, not that night as uh, Jamie Dummer took home the checkered flag and again his main sponsor 
of uh, he and Jason were up in turn one and a very celebratory there. Uh, Jake Arneson took home quick time qualifying. Jamie Schlintz, Chad Rosendahl picked up his race wins. Jason Dummer added to the victory lane as he picked up a six for six dash win. In the Thunderstocks, Tom Lethe picked up his first ever feature win at the Lacrosse Fairground Speedway coming off the go-kart track last year. Bad Brad Warthen of Sparta, Dustin Bagstad, Chris Weber, Jack Litchheim rounded out the top five. A couple important names right there as well. If you look at the points race, not only for the points championship, but rookie of the year, which we're going to get into here in just a minute. Andy Moore picked up the Bud Dash. Dustin Bagstad got a heat race win, and Jack Litchheim picked up a heat race win as well. This one was close pretty much all the way through. Lethe holding off Bagstad and Bad Brad Wartham. That one, of course, called right there at the line for second place. And fittingly enough, our guest on the today's program, which we're going to bring in a little bit later on, is last year's rookie of the year, but running very fine this year is Dustin Bankstead. Now, more importantly, if you look at the points on this one here, Andy Moore only has a 10-point lead over Jason Bolster and an 11-point lead over Brad Worth, and that one could come down to Oktoberfest. Oh, I'm absolutely sure it will, and Oktoberfest is going to be just so exciting this year uh, with, I do believe there's 20-some championships totally involved during the Oktoberfest weekend. Well, a bunch of them are going to come down to this one here, especially Rookie of the Year. Um, it's going to come down to Jack Litchheim and Jordan Myers. I think there's a point or two that separate those two guys, and that one will definitely be coming down uh, to the end of the year. Uh, the Outlaws will be back again for Oktoberfest. That championship will be determined. Can John Olsen hold up Jerry Ellsworth? He only has a five-point lead over him. And they will be running again this year. Now, the change in the schedule for Oktoberfest, and you can find the, the calendar at OktoberfestRaceWeekend.com or just call the Lacrosse Speedway. The Outlaws will be running Saturday night this year, and the Enduro that finished Oktoberfest on Sunday afternoon has been moved to Thursday night this year. So if you want to check out the complete schedule and camping and all that good stuff, check out OktoberfestRaceWeekend.com. When we come back, it was a very exciting weekend for the Window World Hornets. You heard the points. There's a lot of them in contention. Five going for the championship. And a little bit of a do si -do out of turn four with uh, Wendy Leap shot of Winona. This is the Seven Rivers Racing Show. Stay with us right here on KQEG-TV.